Welcome to our lecture online. The next thing we're going to tackle is understanding an area element on the surface of a sphere in spherical coordinates. So that area element would be called DA and it looks like it's approximately a rectangle. So how do we define that rectangle? Well notice that the length in this direction can be found by simply taking the distance r, which is of course the distance from the origin, to the surface on the sphere, so that would be the r vector, the magnitude of the r vector r, and then if we multiply that times arc length, what is the change in the arc length right there? Well, we can call that d theta, that's a small change in the angle theta. So the length in this direction can be called r times d theta, so dA will be r times d theta, which represents the length of the rectangle. And then we have to multiply the times the width to get the area. And the width here, that would be r times the change in the arc length in that direction, which would be d phi. Notice the two edges of that rectangle will then come down over here. You can see the two lines that come from the origin that go outward on the xy plane. So this would be the, the z-axis, this here would be the y-axis, this here would be the x-axis. Notice the angle from the x-axis to the first line is phi, and then the angle from the, the x-axis to the next line is phi plus d phi, that's a change in phi, d phi, so that length there would be called r times d phi. And that would be, let's call it the width of the rectangle. But that's not the whole story. This is where it gets a little bit strange. It turns out that's only the case in, in a very specific situation. That's if the, the, the area element dA is along the xy plane. That's when the area element here is exactly equal to that. But that's only the case on the xy plane. Why is it not the case? Well, simply take a look at it. So if you see the two lines that go from the equator of the sphere to the pole of the sphere, just like on the Earth, the lines that are the, 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 the longitude lines that run parallel to each other, well actually they don't run parallel to each other because when you get to the pole, they converge together at a single point. So you can see that the width gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and that the width of that also is a function of the angle theta. Notice when the angle is zero, the width is zero, and when the angle is 90 degrees, the width is at its maximum. At 90 degrees, it's equal to this, and at theta being zero degrees, it's equal to zero. So we're looking for a trigonometric function, where when the angle is zero, it's zero, and when the angle is 90 degrees, it's its maximum. Well, that's the sine of the angle, in this case the angle is theta, so we also have to multiply that times the sine of theta, and this is the adjustment that we need to make in order to compensate for essentially the geodesic, right? The, the lines that would normally run parallel to each other, but they don't because it converges down to a point at the pole. So that is really the area element. We have to take that into account. And that's where the sine of theta comes from. Now when we rewrite that, we then would write it as dA is equal to r times r, so that becomes r squared times the sine of theta times d phi d theta, and that's typically how it's written. That would be the area element on the surface of a sphere in spherical coordinates. Now, of course, we can use that to calculate the, let's say, the surface of a sphere. Matter of fact, that might be something good to do in the next video to see how we can actually use the area element to find the surface area of a sphere. So let's do that on the next video. That's only our last one. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm good.